Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm at home this time, not in a restaurant. So I've decided to show you this uh, very old recipe it was given to me by uh, an older person in Cagliari, my town. And this is probably the best way to cook sea bass in my town. And believe me, this is a town of uh, fishmen and uh, it's a small uh, town in south of Sardinia called Cagliari. The main uh, ingredient in this dish is actually vernaccia. This is a, it's like a sherry, it's an oxidized one, except the sherry has an addition of alcohol. This one is just pure uh, oxidized uh, white wine. It's very unusual, very dry. So it's quite intense in flavor. We use it for cooking a lot, but it's also very nice for a, uh, as an aperitif uh, if it's uh, drunk very chilled. So it's like a dry sherry. So if you don't have this, you can actually maybe use sherry, very dry sherry, but I would recommend to use this dish to keep it as authentic as possible. And you can purchase this in our shop in Olivino, in number 12, Lower Belgrave Street. And at the same time, I thought it's very unusual to combine red wines with this uh, with fish, but because this is a quite sort of a, as you can see, we'll show you, will be quite sort of a, 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 a very gutsy taste a dish, I think this red wine will pair this dish very well and it's the same from the same uh, producer. It's a red wine with a blend of Sardinian grape varieties which tastes a bit like, uh, uh, like a sherry called the Giganti. Giganti because the area where this wine is made they found this uh, ancient uh, giant uh, sculptures and so on so on. Anyway, let's get on with the, with the recipe. First of all, get a sea bass nice and clean. Make sure you cut the uh, uh, tail properly. Don't leave any trims around. Get rid of the, the wingers. Make sure, put your finger in it and make sure there's no scales because it's so annoying when you're eating fish and you have scales in your mouth because in reality, you can actually eat the skin once this dish is done. And the skin is very good for you because it's got a lot of fiber and it gives a lot of taste to the fish. Anything on a bone, whether it's fish or meat, tastes better, believe me. So that's, that's the main ingredient. Uh, so now we're gonna process, and I'll show you, but it's quite easy. It's a very easy um, dish to prepare. It's actually very good to do this dish when you have a lot of friends around, because it's easy to use, stick it in the oven, and then, uh, and then, um, uh, uh, and then you take it off the oven and you serve it. It's very easy, I'll show you. So, okay, uh, just to be very quick, I don't want to take too much time to this recipe because it's quite simple. The ingredients are sun-dried tomatoes, but dry, not the ones under oil, a bit of parsley, olives. Unfortunately, I'm a bit embarrassed because these, these olives are not the right olives. This is the one in the tin. Anyway, it's nice to have big chunky black olives with a juice inside. Uh, and uh, some cloves of garlic and some breadcrumbs. Today I'm using um, gluten-free breadcrumbs because my wife is, uh, is, uh, is intolerant to gluten and salt and pepper. Bernaccia, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna start showing you what happened now. I take a few bits of Sandra tomatoes. Let's take uh, three pieces for each fish. And I'm gonna take one close of garlic, I think was enough, and I chopped up parsley, so I'm gonna show you that.
This was a job when I was a little boy. My mother used to give to me by using a mezzaluna. Mezzaluna is a utensil that nobody uses anymore. It's, it's called half a moon and you use it like that to chop things up. Okay, that's, uh, that's the chopped up garlic, parsley and some dry tomatoes. So, that's easy. Chop it as fine as you can. Put that in the bin, one second. Get rid of this bowl. I like to get tidy. Uh, we finish with the garlic. Put it back in there. And some dry tomatoes. Okay, put it back in there. So now, now that we've got these, what we do is this. Very simple. Put in the belly and the head like this. That's all we need to do. One and two. A little bit more on the other. Okay, very simple. Now, what we do, uh, a bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Let me wash my hands very quickly. Olive oil because we want the fish to get a little bit wet. Uh, so you can easily almost stroke the fish because it's got no scales. Like this, like that. I should have been totally honest, I forgot to put a bit of salt and pepper inside the inside this but never mind so now oops sorry we gonna replace we cut the fish with breadcrumbs these breadcrumbs I actually grate them when it was a little bit damp they're not that great normally it's better when you have So you put some breadcrumbs all around them, coat them in breadcrumbs. It's starting to be messy now, but don't worry, we're good. Okay, so that's done. Wash my hands again. Okay, so I put some uh, extra virgin olive oil in the frying pan. Okay. Let it go hot now. So what we're going to do, we're going to seal the, the fish before it goes in, in the oven with this. So it's quite simple. This is a messy bit, I suppose. So let's wait for the olive oil to get hot. As you see, this is the olive oil from our shop, extra virgin olive oil from Sardinia. Very good. Um, okay, so now that I've put the frying pan there to heat, Olive oil. Now, what I do, I'm going to start sealing the fish. So, I'm going to put one like this, one like that. I'm going to let them uh, seal in the frying pan. Okay, then now, you know, um, what we're going to do, we're going to turn the fish around. It's a bit of a task because you have to be careful. So, That's it. Okay, so I've turned the fish around, and as you can see, it's created a little bit of a crust on top, which is what we need to create, which is to seal it. Obviously, these breadcrumbs are not that great to use for the fish. We need a thinner breadcrumbs to make sure they're all covered and, and, up, and cover the fish. But fine, we're still gonna get good results. As my mother said, if you use good ingredients, you will always get good result at the end, even if you make no mistake in the recipe. So I think this is almost done. So I'll show you what's going to happen now. What's going to happen now, we're going to transfer this fish into this oven tray. Very simply. Because I think the other side will be done now. One. And 
that too. Okay, so we keep the plane. Okay, so the next stage is the easiest one actually. So all you need to do, believe it or not, is first of all, it's what I've done before. I forgot to put salt and pepper in. Uh, I salt and pepper everything. And I think I would suggest you do that again later on before you, you take the fish out of the oven. So salt and pepper and put quite a little bit of vernaccia. I think put like a, a good glass of wool or something. And at the same time, you just put some olives all over the place. Black olives, there you are. So that's what we need to do. Take a cloth, open the oven, stick it in the oven and leave it there for about, I suppose, 20 minutes. Depends on the power of your oven. 220, 210, 220, even 260. Depends on how quick you want to cook it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the fish on the plate. Sorry about that. And obviously like that. Plate is too small for the size of the fish. I think my fish manga was very generous today to give me this such a huge fish. And it's the fish manga that we use in our restaurants. Now, normally you put the head on the right, like not on the left actually, it's the other way around. Believe it or not, I'm the one who always, but we can always serve it like this. So what I'm gonna do with this is put it back in the oven, uh, on the stove, uh, put a little bit of flame, add a bit more garnacha. Bit more olive oil. Your black pepper. A little salt. I don't think we put much salt in there before. So we're gonna. Use all this in this tray. That's it. Now the breadcrumbs I use normally, if I use proper breadcrumbs, this will be like a darker sauce, obviously, because these are uh, gluten-free. Okay, so that's, that's ready. Okay, after I reduce this medical sauce, all you do is you pull it over. It doesn't look very appetizing, I have to say, but because as I said, I use, it's the wrong, wrong olives and wrong uh, breadcrumbs because it's gluten-free normally. I would use proper breadcrumbs, proper olives, and this sauce will look much more attractive than it is now. So this is the finished product. Spigolo alla vernaccia, and let's uh, get it all clean. It's actually, they should be both the way around. You should always present the fish with a head on the left because you start eating like that and cleaning like that. So this fish, obviously, it's too big for a plate because our fish manga is over generous, lovely guy, and he it, it supplies us with this amazing sea bass. But the ingredients are very simple: sea bass, scaled and cleaned properly, gutted, it has to be very clean, and then uh, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, parsley, black olives, not this one, the pitted, uh, and breadcrumbs. And and a vital ingredient is the vernaccia, which you can find in our shop. Uh, if not, use sherry, but I don't know, I never tried it with sherry, I always do it with this, I always have a bottle of this at home. It's good for cooking and it's good as an aperitif as I mentioned. And um, you know, good luck.